OK, let's move on. Now, Einstein called maths the poetry of logical ideas, but to many of us, memories of mental arithmetic tests at school are enough to inspire sweaty palms. I actually used to really enjoy maths, I have to say. But at the elite end of the subject, the really elite end, it seems change is afoot. Mariam Mizakani, who's an Iranian-born professor who lectures at Stanford University in the US, well, she's just been awarded the Fields Medal, and that's the maths equivalent of the Nobel Prize to you and me, virtually. Her work focuses on understanding the symmetry of curved surfaces and she's achieved widespread acclaim. But she's the first woman in nearly 80 years to take that top prize, and we want to know why. So with me are Dr Helen Wilson, who's a mathematician from University College London, and Josera Mertins, who's a mathematician and a TV presenter of the Portuguese TV show This Is Maths. We're also... Uh, and we're also joined from Coventry by Professor Caroline Ceres, who's a mathematician at Warwick University. She's in the screen over there. And she's the co-founder of the European Women in Mathematics Network. Um, Dr Ceres, let's speak to you first of all. Um, how do you, what's your reaction to the news of this win and why has it taken so long? Oh, I'm absolutely delighted by, by the news. I, I, I have known Mariam for many years and I cherished a secret hope for years that she might be the first woman to get the Fields Medal. So I'm absolutely delighted and it's fantastic news for her and for women mathematicians. And, and Dr Helen Wilson in the studio with me here, a mathematician. Indeed. Why? Are you jealous first of all? You Not at all. <laughs> I'm already over 40, it's too late for me. Oh, as if. Why is it taken so long? It's almost 80, 78 years the Fields Medal has been handed out, but no woman's won it until now. That seems a little bit shocking to me. It is shocking um, and I I have struggled to understand for years why there has never been a female field medalist. I'm delighted that there is one now. Uh, the best guess I can come up with is that pure mathematics, which tends to be where the field medal goes, is often a very isolated and individual activity. And perhaps women work more in teams and more on the applied side, but I'm not comfortable with mm, these generalizations like and I don't you like it at all. You couldn't write a paper on that, Absolutely you? not. No way. You couldn't, couldn't prove touch that. There's I no couldn't. equals in that no, equation. there isn't. Um, uh, Rogeria Martins, is mathematics sexist? No, I, I, I don't think so. I, I think one of the reasons uh, uh, this is happening is that um, uh, men tend to be much more competitive and assume their competitiveness. competitiveness. For example, the, the kids, the, the boys tend to play video games or football. Have you so ever seen women's sport? There's no lack of yeah, competitiveness. Yes, 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 there is. There. But, 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 but then, then uh, maybe the, the, the kind of subjects that men choose when they, they are mathematicians are much this kind of hot topics that s somehow these guys from the, f the, from the Fields Medal are, in, are looking in. So maybe th this is one of the reasons. Uh, this is just uh, uh, another thing that I, that I can prove, of course. This is, this is just a feeling. Mm. Caroline Ceres, um, women are less competitive than men. That's why it's taken so long. What do you discuss? I, I actually think it, I've got a slightly different take on this. I think um, it wasn't that very long ago when it was considered that women shouldn't be studying science at all. It's some generations now, but it's not that long ago. And it's a thing that changes very slowly, generation by generation. So we've got to the point now where there's a whole community of women mathematicians who really some of whom are really at the top of the profession more more older than 40 but they've really made it and they're very distinguished people and somehow the idea that there's this whole kind of uh, supportive crowd of people around you um, not exactly role models because at the level at which Mariam is is working she doesn't really need role models but nonetheless I think there is something about having a community of women. You know that they've achieved very highly, and so somehow uh, the sky's the limit. Okay. I, I think it's also true that, that you do have to concentrate incredibly hard in order to um, achieve this very high level. It's sort of being, it's like being an absolutely top athlete. You have to be absolutely focused and concentrated for many, many years. Um, and to have tremendous talent to start with to achieve something like this. Absolutely. Dr Helen Wilson, is a prize like this going to encourage more women to get into mathematics? I would hope so. I, in fact, women do go into mathematics in good numbers up to the undergraduate level, but I hope that it will encourage those who are already engaged in taking maths degrees to think, well, actually I could go all the way, 
why don't I just stick at this just a little bit longer and see how it goes? And Rogerio, mm. you host a television programme that aims to make maths fun, to encourage yeah. more kids to take it up, and actually, here comes the messy, unrehearsed <laughs> bit. You've actually brought an experiment in yes. to I, I just show say us. that it's, it's, import it's important to have references, and maybe uh, Miriam will be one reference for, for, the, for women. Uh, in a when role model in the future, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Now, what's your experiment? Yes, Explain it to I, us. I have here an experiment that so it, the, it's related. The valuable stuff out yeah. the way. Yeah. <laughs> that is related with, with my studies in the last years. Actually, I studied dynamical systems. That it's actually the, the same field that Miriam studies and also oh, another okay. one of, of the world. And this is a metronome. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, what, what happens is that if we have two metronomes, this is a device, probably everybody knows what this is, but this is to make uh, when someone is playing well, an instrument. Piano, you want to keep in yes, time, yeah. Yes, yeah. you want to keep in yeah. time. So if you have two metronomes, even if they are um, put at the same frequency, they will not be uh, synchronized because they're, they're, they, this, is, are, this is not a very uh, um, uh, yeah, precise instrument. Further and further yeah. Apart. Yeah. But if I put them inside the table, Say, I will have these two cans, and then I'll do this kind right. of table. Okay. And then I put them here. Let me just proposedly. So they okay. just they synchronize. Yeah. If we if we wait a little bit, uh, they will tend to adjust. They are of course they are somehow communicating through this oscillating table. Okay. And if we wait a little bit, say half a minute, they they will tend to. to See how they are almost they just got back together. Synchronized. Just synchronized together. Yes. Okay. Why? Why does this happen? Well, this is called a phenomenon. It is this phenom phenomenon called synchronization. It, it was discovered by Christian Higgins on the 17th century, and right now we know that this is everywhere. This is a kind of phenomenon that appears everywhere, and we studied. This is a materialization, say, of an idea, of a mathematical idea that we studied, and uh, just to to have an, uh, an idea of the kind. I think we're not going to have time to get to that actually because we've yeah. only got a few seconds left. That is a very fascinating experiment. I feel like I've learned something. Thank you very much indeed. There you go. Making maths fun. Thank you to all my guests. Fascinating uh, experiment. Really good to have that, uh, that medal winner be a woman, I think, hopefully breaking bad.